My name is Dane Wigington. I'm the lead researcher and administration for a website called geoengineeringwatch.org. The purpose of our site is to educate people on the subject of geoengineering, something that too few know about and something that literally holds life on, on the planet in balance. Geoengineering is weather modification on a global scale. Many refer to this as chemtrails. This aircraft you see spraying right now is a KC-10 and that the uh, nozzles are visible. You see inside the circles, and you can see them shutting on and off in a moment as you watch this tape roll. And the dispute as to whether or not these programs are going on is really a moot point. We have more than enough data. We have actual footage, as you're seeing now, to show that these tankers are indeed spraying at in altitude. The materials we see showing up on the ground are the exact materials named in numerous geoengineering patents, as many as 150 patents. So. At this point, the, the notion that these programs are not going on is, is simply uh, denial. Skies like this, many have grown to think are natural, but they're anything but. And we've seen this for so long now, and it's been ramped up at, at such a steady pace that people have simply become used to skies like this. Anybody who thinks grid patterns like this are natural should recheck their reality. This is anything but natural. We, we seldom see blue skies anymore. Skies like this have all too often become the norm. Unfortunately, most people don't even look up. I think at times you could start the sky and fire, nobody would notice. More grid patterns. I mean, these are very symmetrical patterns. It's exactly what geoengineering patents call for, solar obscuration to block the sun with toxic metal particulates. And unfortunately, with geoengineers, they don't seem to take the consequences into account. They're, yep, the planet is like a giant physics lab for them and they, they seem to not be able to look outside that bubble. These are, these are what many of our fir trees look like in the forest now. And in fact, as a, one of our audience brought in, the fir trees have gone to cone, as you see here, which means they're in a stress response. They think they're going to die. They're trying to uh, preserve their DNA. This is uh, halos around the sun. We see often as the atmosphere is filled with particulates, important to understand, just because you don't see trails from horizon to horizon does not mean you're not breathing particulates. We seldom see blue skies anymore. They're, they're a, a uh, silvery white color, especially in the mornings or the afternoons. If you look to the east or to the west and you block the sun with something, you can see the air is very silvery white. This is indicative of an atmosphere saturated with particulates. These particulates create drought. This is a very known and not disputed effect of geoengineering. As you saturate the atmosphere with particulates, you diminish rain. People need to get this through their head. This is not about seeding to increase rain. This is about creating artificial clouds, which reduces rain. When you block the sun, you block evaporation. You block light photons, which uh, diminishes uh, the, the ability for the sun to knock molecules loose and create evac evaporation. So what we get is protracted drought in some areas and deluge in others, exactly what we have in the continental US right now. We see more and more reservoirs like this that are dry or going dry. Again, exactly what we would expect with geoengineering, exactly what we have. Putting the wrench on planet Earth. This is the epitome of human insanity, to think that they could alter and control these very complex natural systems is insanity of the first order. More skies that we become used to, this high level, toxic, artificial, Stratocirrus. These are not natural stratocirrus. Sky should be blue, clouds should be white. Meteorologists, for the most part, know this is going on. We were told by a Fox affiliate meteorologist that they're being taken into rooms and told not to discuss this issue on air. This is, this is heavy wet snow. Now, this is a new term by Weather Channel to describe the artificially nucleated snow. Yes, they are nucleating snowstorms artificially and chemically. This creates a snow that's like concrete, collapses trees, collapses power lines, does horrific damage. Again, uh, consequences for tampering with nature. Now, this shows that the US military, this is from the top naval officer, considers climate change the greatest national security threat. And if anybody thinks the DOD is not involved with these programs, they have not done any investigation. Bottom line is the data is there for anybody who wants to look. Another document, Solar Radiation Management Governance Initiative. Documents like this abound for anybody who takes the time to look. This discusses the international governance of solar geoengineering amongst the elites. Not that we would have any choice of who dumps whatever into our skies or controls our weather because we're not a part of the equation. This is, this is amongst the government elites to discuss how they will control our weather. Geoengineering governance, another such document. Dis discussion from the global elite as to how they will control our weather. No say for us. 
Full spectrum dominance. This is a military term for a, stire, a desired objective to control all aspects strategically, including the weather. The weather is, is, is known as a force multiplier with the US military. Geoengineering governance and technology. This document was from January 2nd of this year. It's 40 pages long, can be found online, can be found on our site, outlines the full governance proposals for geoengineering because of course when you mess with part of the system, you mess with the entire system. And, and again, the global power structure is discussing this amongst themselves. The public does not have any input to this equation. Weather as a force multiplier, a term I mentioned a minute ago, owning the weather in 2025. This is a stated US military objective, to own the weather in 2025. And I do not mean to imply that the US military is the only player in this game. We have China and Russia on the other end of the fence. And at this point, it's a tug of war with the atmosphere. And the American public appears to be one of the victims in, in this uh, equation. And it appears that there are other internal objectives against the American people to control food supplies, control water supplies, control water rights, so forth. Now, as I said before the start of this show, semantics are very, very important. The terminology you use to convince people of th this issue being valid is important. If you Google chemtrail, you find conspiracy theory, first thing that comes up, massive Wikipedia definition, and they guard this definition very carefully, by the way. I've had scientists who have contacted me who have tried to alter this definition and point out that this is a layman's term for geoengineering. Within five minutes, it's changed back. They watch, they watch this definition like a hawk. Again, anybody who thinks this is commercial traffic may be confused about where they're going. Uh, they, should, they should think again. I mean, this, is, this has nothing to do with commercial traffic. If you Google geoengineering, this is the front page you find. Our site is the second item on that page. We're all science, no advertising, no politics. Geoengineering is, is hard science, and if people pursue that term, they'll find credible data. Semantics matter. This is a, this is a patent. This means that the person who owns this patent has the sole right to carry on this program. This is called stratospheric wells box seeding for reduction of global warming. This describes expressly the payload disbursement of aluminum nanoparticles into the atmosphere. So these patents exist, about 150 of them, describing the intent of blocking the sun by spraying these aerosols into the atmosphere. Global warming and global dimming. Global dimming is something people should be familiar with as well. As of the latest reports, 22% of the sun's direct rays no longer reach the surface of the planet. They're being blocked. The planet is literally encased in a cocoon of toxic metals. Yes, pollution is a part of this problem, but we believe a small part in comparison to the geoengineering dispersed aerosols. So uh, as they block the sun, uh, the, the list of consequences is horrific, one of which is vitamin D deficiency, of which 98% of the US population is now deficient in vitamin D. The host of diseases and ailments that ensue from that is horrific, not to mention the fact that we are breathing these particulates. So photosynthesis for plants, another issue. Uh, you, you can't block the source of life on planet Earth without consequence. These are the skies that many have become used to. These are, that is 100% aerosols in that photo. That is not stratosphere. Scientists seek to legitimize geoengineering while acknowledging its catastrophic effects. Again, the scientists, and, and many of which I know, are little concerned with the consequences of their experiments. They're just, uh, they look at the planet as a giant physics lab for them to carry out their little operations. Obama, Obama's geoengineering program, Poison from the Sky. Obama's science advisor, John Holdren, strong advocate for these programs. Uh, they, the Obama administration, in fact, since he has taken office, these programs have been ramped up yet again. They go back a long way, but they're going for broke now. It appears that they're doubling down on the damage they've already done. It's like Corexit in the Gulf of Mexico. What did they do? Did they try to acknowledge the mess in the Gulf of Mexico, the oil spill? No, they tried to hide it with a chemical disbursement called Corexit, which by some reports made the toxicity in that region 52 times greater, but they don't care. The goal is to hide the damage they've done, hide the crimes already committed. Again, more clearly unnatural traffic in the air. What are we dealing with? So many people ask this question, why would they do this? If they're doing it to themselves, why would they do it? First and foremost, we're not dealing with sanity. Jack Nicholson puts a good face on that, I think. And uh, we can look back and see that anybody who would detonate 1,800 nuclear bombs on planet Earth, which contaminated all life forms on Earth, is not, is not sane in any way, shape, or form. And the definition of clinical insanity, uh, and, and we are talking about 4% of the population, by the way, the psychopathic, they have no consciousness of the comprehension, or, or no comprehension as to the consequences of their actions even to themselves. So that, that's something that must be considered. Has any such testing gone on that we know about? Absolutely. 
every day there's more data coming out about not other governments alone, but our government testing on its own people, its own soldiers. And, and again, our military is full of very, very dedicated, honorable people, full of them. But there are scientists and there are some in power that use such dedicated and honorable people as, as pawns in this equation. This is one such test. Deadly chemical sprays on American cities. This is well documented. People can, can find any of this data online. Insane nuclear explosions, again, same people don't blow off 1,800 nuclear bombs. I think we know they work after maybe a few dozen, and, and we could stop at that point and not build enough to exterminate life on Earth 12,000 times over. That's how much nuclear weapon we have. So it's important to remember people who use an excuse that, well, this can't be happening because they wouldn't do it to themselves, that excuse doesn't hold water. World eternally contaminated by depleted uranium. This is just one more example of this insanity. Depleted uranium is used in the ammunition now for the NATO countries. It's causing horrific damage. Many remember Gulf War syndrome. Uh, this is related to depleted uranium. Again, no concern for the consequences. Weather warfare. This is going on right now. We appear to have China and Russia on one side of the fence, the NATO countries on the other. The atmosphere has become a battlefield, a very uh, covert battlefield with all life on Earth at stake. Mechanics, airline executives, and doctors talk about Project Cloverleaf. Many ask, are there just military tankers in these programs, or is there commercial aircraft? In fact, with GPS tracking, commercial aircraft have been identified from the ground, leaving particulate trails. Um, and Project Cloverleaf appears to be the outline for this. It makes sense. It's a way of uh, artificially stimulating the economy, keeping non-profitable airlines in the air and flying. We don't implicate pilots, airline personnel, at all in this, in the sense that these programs, based on the patents for powder contrail generators and so forth, part of the spraying apparatus, automated. We don't believe pilots have anything to do with the actual operation of these systems. Blue skies as they used to look, as they should look. Skies again as they look now. Important that people start to look up. Our atmosphere is as thin as a layer of paint on a basketball. It doesn't take that much to damage it. No atmosphere, no life. Kim Trail's nano aluminum and neurodegenerative and neurodevelopmental effects. Russell Blaylock, MD. Russell Blaylock is an internationally recognized neuroscientist, award-winning neuroscientist, speaking on the record about the lethality of these programs. Nanoparticulate size, so small they are taken through the lung lining straight into the bloodstream where they adhere to cell receptors like a plaque. They're bioavailable, they build up in the body, causing a vast array of diseases and ailments. To give an idea of the size of these particles, if you see the little blue dots on that hair, those are micron-sized particles. We're talking about particles that are a thousand times smaller than those in relation to a human hair. It's inconceivably small. Again, Russell Blaylock warning about the ailments with, related to these atmospheric spraying programs. Alzheimer's. Now, as of April of this year, one in three seniors in the U.S. dies with Alzheimer's and or dementia. Doesn't mean dies from it, but dies with it. So, and it's not either a black or white situation. Just because you're not diagnosed with this doesn't mean that you're not on your way to that point. There's a whole lot of in-between. So there's no question that all of us have had our uh, neurological system affected. We're all breathing this stuff. It's inside all our systems. So uh, these are staggering statistics, one in three with Alzheimer's and or dementia. Autism. Autism has increased 10,000% since 1975. One in 50 children now has autism, also related to aluminum. Morgellons, another disease that appears to be related directly to the spraying. There are also fibers in the patent I showed you earlier, polymer fibers. It appears that some people's systems react violently to these fibers trying to work their way out of the system. So Morgellons is becoming a, a very serious disease the medical industry has yet to, to recognize, we believe connected with the spraying as well. Synergistic effects of environmental and heavy metals. These metals are toxic in and of themselves. When you combine them, they become much more lethal. We've been given studies recently that indicate when mercury and aluminum are combined, toxicity increases as much as 10,000%. Bad equation. Let's add to the equation HARP, High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. This is a facility in Alaska. We believe there's 18 such facilities around the globe now. As the ionosphere is, is hit with these particles, as they ionize the whole atmosphere, make it more conductive, these signals can actually manipulate the jet stream. The data is quite clear on that. They, they cause a bulge in the atmosphere by heating it to tremendous temperatures, and that manipulates the jet stream. We believe, in fact, we are seeing huge jet stream manipulation. It's part of the reason why California is frying right now. As these clouds are hit with these signals, you see how they align like this. 
And this is indicative of them being exposed to these radio frequency signals. These are very powerful signals. So our bodies, as they become more conductive because we absorb this stuff, these signals become more detrimental to us as well. Uh, we're an electrical organism, so all these things hamper our own health function. Another article, the effects of HARP on the ionosphere. Again, the atmosphere is nothing but a massive physics lab for these people, and they seem to have no regard for the consequences. Uh, clearly, something radical happening to this cloud, and you know we can uh, say for certain that something's going on, some sort of experimentation. This is not a natural phenomenon. Same here. Now, this is an article by a Canadian journalist called Will Tom named Will Thomas, Kim Trails Wireless and You. And again, as our bodies become more conductive from these particulates and we're exposed to more and more of these signals, and especially the signal from HARP, which we see, by the way, the, the signature clouds above our area a lot. HARP helps build the high pressure up like we've had over us again and again and again. These particles dry the air out. If anybody wonders why there's no dew in the morning, you almost never see dew. We have single digit humidity because these particles absorb and accrete all available moisture. They virtually suck it right out of the atmosphere and out of the foliage. So uh, these facilities, these ionosphere heaters, are, are a radical effect in, in the weather we, we, patterns we see happening of late. History Channel also airs proof, heart weather manipulation, uh, a lot of documentation on this. Jet stream movement, unprecedented jet stream movement. So we, we see this almost all the time now, in the, in the, uh, in the lower 48 especially. The, and, and this appears to be connected to, for example, what they might be trying to do in the Arctic could be affecting us horrifically here because the jet stream as it moves across us, it's part of that long-term manipulation that I believe right now this is why we're frying at this point because there are some very profound things happening in the Arctic and we appear to be one of the reasons that gets thrown under the bus for, their, for the manipulation of things they're trying to do to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish in the Arctic. So again, this is a very complex equation and when you affect something upstream, it affects everything downstream. More harp signature clouds. You see the, um, the ribbing in these clouds. This is, this is typical of something exposed to the harp frequency. Now, this is Project Lucy, which involves these ionosphere heaters. Again, these massively powerful atmospheric heating devices. They are releasing, methane is releasing now around the globe in many locations, and I'll elaborate on that as I go further into this presentation. But as this methane is hitting the atmosphere, methane is, over a 10-year time horizon, 100 times more potent a greenhouse gas than CO2. It's virtually like covering the planet with a layer of glass. Now, their latest proposal, as the experiment gets worse and worse, as they play weather whack-a-mole, they're now, you, we believe they're already at this program, to use the ionosphere heaters to nuke the atmosphere in a desperate attempt to try to degrade the methane that is already one of the consequences of the programs they've already been at for 60 years. So the, the equation just gets worse and worse. And we believe, by the way, they have been at this for about 60 years. We have documents on geoengineeringwatch.org um, from the NASA archives that show weather modification activity in the US back to the, to the uh, mid 40s. More harp exposed clouds. Chinese scientists create second artificial snowstorm in Beijing. Mainstream media covered this because the Chinese government openly announced they were creating artificial snowstorms. This is turning what should have been a rain event into a snow event. It's happening here regularly. December 21st of last year, we had a massive artificially nucleated storm. And when you're in the woods, like where I live, 40 degrees, and it starts snowing, these giant artificial flakes, and all you can hear overhead is aircraft flying low. We've tested the snow. It's packed full of metals. And um, you know this is causing horrific damage to the trees and the foliage. This is ozone hole from the Arctic. You see 1984, where you don't have any blues. 1997, lots of blues. This also is a part of the geoengineering program consequences. As they saturate the atmosphere with these particulates, it causes ozone damage. The science is extremely clear on that. Many have felt how hot the sun feels on their face. If you drive through parking lots in Costco, Walmart, or, or around Reading, you'll see the south-southwest sides of the trees literally burnt off. This is not natural. And this ozone hole is expanding. They're trying desperately to hide it. Unprecedented ozone hole opens up over Canadian Arctic. More documentation on the ozone problem. Recent changes to Gulfstream causing widespread gas hydrate destabilization. This is methane hydrates, which are releasing from the seafloor as we speak in multiple places around the globe as geoengineering has altered the weather patterns, it's altered the rain cycles, it's altered, the, again, as the wind patterns are altered, the ocean currents are altered, that appears to be a causal factor, a major causal factor in triggering methane hydrate release. More wind, more storms, we're seeing that now around the globe. 
Arctic Methane Emergency Group. Planetary catastrophe is inevitable. This is from a group of scientists in the Arctic right now. And again, one must always sift the baby from the bathwater. And I've met some of these scientists. And although they are correct that the methane is a, a global game-changing event and a planetary catastrophe, what do these guys propose? That we geoengineer. As if it hasn't been going on for 60 years already. Now, either these people live in a hole or they're lying their butts off. So if this is an attempt to legitimize geoengineering, we don't know for other reasons or aspects, but we know enough about geoengineering to know at this point it is a cure, quote, cure, that is far worse than the, than the disease. The planet has not been allowed to respond. Now, this is another attempt that should show the, the depth of, of this issue. White House, this is, this is only three weeks old. White House warned on imminent Arctic ice death spiral. We will probably have an ice-free Arctic this year. Many people need to understand this is not about Al Gore. It's not about carbon credits. I do not like Al Gore uh, or his carbon credit scams. But the bottom line is geoengineering has decimated our planet's climate. As the ice disappears, that heats the Arctic Ocean. That releases more methane, more heating, very vicious downward cycle. White House trying desperately to hide this at this point. I don't think they can hide it much longer. This is methane coming from the seafloor. Uh, it, it's burning a hole in the ice. We're seeing this around the globe. This is more methane charts. As you go from the uh, left end of this chart, where you see it's not so dark of colors. This is, I think, in 2008 to 2013. You see much more red. The atmosphere is indeed filling with methane right now. That's like covering the planet with a layer of glass. It is happening. If the planet's not allowed to respond on its own, they are literally blocking the rain, especially from Northern California, the Pacific Northwest. They are blanket spraying the Eastern Pacific. We have the satellite photos to prove it. That shuts off the hydrological cycle. We fry. So uh, again, these guys are, they're like kids in a sandbox. They're like crazy kids in a sandbox that just want to conduct their experiments till there's nothing left. More methane. Again, the darker colors you see on the right, uh, this, is, this is from 2008 to 2011. Much more methane saturation in the atmosphere. As one of the, one of the members of the audience brought up, as methane releases from the seafloor, it aerates the water like a bottle of champagne. Ships have no buoyancy. This is, in fact, what we've seen for many decades in, in the Bermuda Triangle. As ships go to the bottom fully intact, this is methane fields releasing. But now the fields releasing, for example, in the East Siberian Shelf of the Arctic are massive in size compared to what's been releasing. And I, I don't think they can hide this release much longer. And this hopefully will help expose the geoengineering programs. Methane bubbles could sink ships, as we've already discussed. Rising Arctic Ocean temperatures cause gas hydrate destabilization. Yet more documentation from the geophysical research letters. Would an Arctic methane release spell the end of human life on Earth? Yes, it could, and it may. And I, I, I'm not trying to strip hope out of this equation. If, if we could stop geoengineering and the planet could respond on its own, that is our best tack. We know from previous events, paleoclimatic events, from 55 million years ago is the, mo the most recent methane mass expulsion. It was a global mass extinction, 70% terrestrial extinction, 95% aquatic extinction. If enough of this methane releases, it's going to be game over. It's one more reason that the planet has to be allowed to respond on its own. These programs have to be stopped. What are climate change feedback loops? As I explained with methane already, this is one of these loops. As the planet is warm from these, these programs are exacerbating the warming, no question. As the planet warms and the methane releases, it hits the atmosphere, traps heat, that causes more methane to release, more trapping of heat. This is called the feedback loop. And, it's, and these feedback loops are triggered right now. And I believe the power structure is literally in a panic. They thought they could play God with the weather, with all of us as part of this experiment. And now they know that you don't get something for nothing in this equation. I believe they're in absolute panic trying to figure out how to put the genie back in the bottle. But it's, 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 it can't be done. What they can do is stop hampering the planet's ability to respond to these problems. This is temperatures, and again, you hear a lot of argument about this. Is the planet warming? Is it cooling? It's too political. This issue is too political. You know, Al Gore is, is, is such an incredible idiot that he, is, he has caused people to, to not look at the truth. And, and his hypocrisy, unbelievable hypocrisy, has really muddied the water. You take geoengineering out of the equation, and people wouldn't be scratching their heads about this. We had a snow event in Amarillo, Texas, May 1st of this year. It was 100 degrees on the ground on May 1st. It snowed on May 2nd. Anybody should know this is absolutely unnatural. This is fully documented. I, my, this is on our site. I have all the data from, from NOAA about this event on our site. Geoengineering is skewing the equation, make pe making people think that things are getting cooler. They are not. 
So uh, again, this is not about Al Gore, but geoengineering is trapping more heat than it deflects, shredding the ozone layer, stopping the hydrological cycle, killing the boreal forest, poisoning our waters and soils. Um, it, it is the, the elephant in the room at this point. Ocean acidification, also a huge factor. Our oceans are being acidified very rapidly at this point. Uh, the oceans are virtually on the verge of collapse, and we're seeing fish stocks decline some 94, 95%. If the ocean is gone, oxygen content is depleted further. That's the major source of oxygen on planet Earth. Boreal forest, the second source of oxygen. Global oxygen content is indeed plummeting right now. So you can't, again, you can't hamper these systems with, with uh, the toxic spraying that these guys are doing around the globe and not have uh, biosystems collapse. Are our oceans on the brink of collapse, as we discussed? Yes, they are. These articles are out there for anybody who bothers to look, because certainly our mainstream media wouldn't cover this. They're too busy telling us when the next episode of American Idol is on. Massive fish die-offs. These are occurring around the globe as we speak. Yet more and more. And half of Southern California sea lion pups have died this winter. Many people don't know about this. There's thousands of them dying washing up at the beach. They simply have nothing to eat. Although radiation from Fukushima has been implicated in some of this, much of the rest is just simply a lack of food. And, and that's, they, these events will not be hidden much longer. That's why I have no hesitation discussing them. And people can call me alarmist. They can call me whatever they want. This is happening now. You are here. This is ice decline. Although people have referred to modeling for the, for the climate scientists, and I, I use the word loosely. I mean, the, our quote unquote scientists um, are often very disconnected from reality. They're paid to say what they say. That's true. But in fact, if we have an ice-free Arctic this year, and all indication is we may. If it's not this year, it'll be next year. That's about 100 years ahead of modeling. So yes, the modeling's wrong, but it's far short of how bad it really is. And geoengineering is fueling that fire. Arctic ice death spiral. Again, the innermost ring is the mass for the Arctic ice right now. It is 19% of what it was 30 years ago. And once the ice is gone, the ocean will heat very quickly, methane will release faster, and the temperatures we've seen rising. We know we're going to be 113 here in our area tomorrow. I mean, these are record-breaking, record-shattering temperatures. We're going to see a lot more of this if, if the planet's not allowed to respond. And based on all available data, by the way, from uh, an event five million years ago in Earth's history called the Pliocene Epoch, as there's more carbon in the atmosphere, there's normally more rain. The planet responds. The boreal forests thrive. They're not killed with these toxic particulates as the sun's blocked and the rain's blocked. And so we would have more lush conditions right now if they weren't spraying. There's other implications that aren't all positive, but the bottom line is how do you, how do you fly a thousand jets or more around the planet every day dumping these toxic particulates and think you're going to do anything but harm? This is another graph on Arctic ice mass. You see it's going straight down. What the hell is happening to the Arctic sea ice? Geoengineering is happening, and it's making the situation worse by the day overall. They can, I want to stress this, geoengineering can and does create very significant short-term cooling events. It absolutely can and does. By the time you divert the jet stream, pump cold air south, artificially chemically ice nucleate, which is like throwing ice cubes into your swamp cooler, that's how you go from 100 degrees to snow in one day, as we saw in Amarillo, Texas. It can create these short-term cooling events, which are very confusing to people. How does it snow in, in, in June? Or they, they see these things on the news with the Weather Channel hypes up. But at the cost of a much worsened long-term warming, that's the price that's paid with geoengineering. New concerns about the climate change in the boreal forest. Our forests are dying. Latest report I saw from boreal forest in Alaska, 30% mortality. Anybody who says the trees are not dying, and some of our local biologists will say this, everything's fine, nothing's wrong. Drag them out in the forest and let them look at our trees. Manzanita's even dying. You ever try to kill a manzanita? It's dying everywhere. It's flashing out dead. 10 foot high plants are flashing out dead. They cannot take the bioavailable aluminum in the soil. They cannot take the increased UV. They've taken all they can handle and now they're dying. Fir trees are dying everywhere, as I said, and I think this year will be absolutely cataclysmic. When you block the rain, and those who moved here probably love the forest, when you, when you block the rain and you alter photosynthesis and you load the soils with bioavailable aluminum, the trees begin to die. Now you coat them with an incendiary dust. These metals are an incendiary dust. Now let's add dry lightning because we've had diminished rainfall. We have a more conductive atmosphere, so we have more lightning now with less rain cataclysmic for the forest, and in fact, on forest fires, more dead trees, as we see here, 
What's killing the great forests of the American West? I just described that. Many people don't even know our forests are in sharp decline. They're in very, very sharp decline. And I think this year may be cataclysmic as far as the fires go. To reiterate how, many, how much metals in our soils, this is a graph that, uh, as it escalates toward the right, this is the amount of toxic heavy metals in our rivers and lakes adding up over the last uh, 20 or so years. It's adding up exponentially, and, and it's the big elephant in the room. People ask, well, why aren't the agencies discussing this? Why isn't EPA screaming their lungs off about this? Because the system's been rigged for them not to. I've been in high-level EPA meetings in Sacramento. Five top EPA people, arranged by a congressional rep, told in my face, the system's rigged. They're mandated tests for combustion particulates only. They don't care what else is in their samples. It goes out the window. They quit testing for aluminum in the water in 2002. Now all the runoff tests with Fish and Game, which I communicated with two weeks ago, uh, has made it clear that although they have to test for 130 elements and anybody who puts runoff into the systems, guess what? They don't have to test for aluminum anymore. The system is rigged not to show these particulates. Who else profits from this? Kim Trails and Monsanto's new aluminum resistant gene. We have the disaster capitalist. Monsanto is now going to save the day, apparently, with their drought-resistant, aluminum-resistant seeds. If you talk to people in Shasta County or anywhere around the country, most of them will say they're having great difficulty growing anything. The soils have been sterilized. Fungus is taking over. It's just like in the human body. When you kill all the good microbes, funguses take over. Same is happening in the environment right now. Geoengineers pulled off toxic cooldown. This is another article reiterating what I mentioned earlier. This is why this issue is so confusing for people when they have a, a very cold event somewhere and people think, well, gee, you know, the, nothing's wrong with the climate. Uh, you take geoengineering out of the equation, it'll be quite clear to all of us how much damage they have done to the climate. Protracted drought everywhere. Africa appears to be one area where a lot of experimentation has gone on over a lot of years. And now there's U.S. boots on the ground in 150 countries around the globe. And it appears to us, who have examined this issue in earnest, that countries are droughted out and literally brought to their knees. And then they allow a U.S. presence in those countries. And it appears to be related to resources. So we can't prove this. No, we can't prove this. It's like the 50-year chain smoker who dies of cancer, lung cancer. You can't prove that the smoking killed him. But we can say the dots damn sure connect. And it appears geoengineering is being used as a weapon around the globe right now, not just by us. I don't mean to just implicate the US. It, you know, we, we believe Russia and China are actively involved as well. This is, off the, this is off our coast. This involves us. If you look at those trails, unless those planes, again, were damn confused about where they were flying and doing loops at the bottom, they blanket spray off our coast every day. This blocks the hydrological cycle. If anybody wonders why the rain is always late, always less, where I live in Shasta County, I'm almost 200 inches of rain short for the last seven years. 200. The storms always drop less than they say, with very few exceptions, the occasional deluge. And we see sat photos like this every day. They're blanket spraying the entire eastern Pacific. That simply blocks our water, period. Geoengineering and global drought. The planet is warmer. We should have more rain. The laws of physics state this very clearly. 7% more moisture for every degree of warming. We have less. How can that be? Geoengineering is the only explanation, black to global dimming. They are literally encasing the planet in this toxic cloud of aluminum. Okay, this relates to us as well. If you look at this map, the darker red colors are on the top map. That's above average temperatures. On the bottom map where you see the B and the dark colors, that's below normal rainfall. This is typical for California in recent years. As the storms come through, they aerosolize them. They create clouds, but not much rain falls. So we have actually cooler zones during much of the time along the western coast, not lately, but the experimentation appears to change. And we have below normal rainfall. And that's because as they aerosolize those clouds, they migrate that moisture, OK? It doesn't fall on us. It migrates somewhere else. And let's see what we, what we see happening with that. The US drought monitor. So what do we see? And this, is, this map's a, a little dated, but the current map is almost the same. We see a line from north to south about in the center part of the country. On one side of that line, you have extreme drought. The other side, you have extreme flooding. And this is exactly what we'd expect with geoengineering. It causes drought and deluge. You migrate water from one place to another in a very haphazard way. You throw the whole system out of balance. And this is what we have now. And if we continue on this track, this is what North, the North State will look like, along with much of the rest of the Western US. High stakes fight over water rights. I think we've seen this before. You create the disaster, and you use that as the premise by which you acquire rights, right? We've seen that before, even with the Patriot Act and things like that. 
water rights are being very actively pursued by the federal government around the western US. And we believe this is a part of this equation. This is a multi-layered onion. I'm not trying to pin it on just this or that, but there appears to be many things that they are trying to accomplish and, and putting life on Earth at risk in the process. Chemtrails have increased electrical conductivity in the atmosphere for three, from three to 20 times. This is increasing lightning, as we stated. We see a lot more lightning, a lot less rain now, a lot more fires. Inside insurance lightning strikes on the increase. Climate Emergency Institute. This regards atmospheric oxygen. As you see the bottom of the graph as it heads toward the right, that indicates rapidly depleting global oxygen content. No oxygen, no life on Earth. I think we all are clear on this, and, and it is decreasing rapidly. When you acidify the oceans from the methane release, when you poison the boreal forests and you burn the boreal forests, the Earth's oxygen making capacity is greatly diminished. And the less oxygen we have, the more physical ailments we'll have, period. <laughs>